We all know the drill. You get down to the supermarket, go to Woolies or Coles, and you see there a block of cheese on special for just 10 bucks. On special. It used to be eight bucks. They jacked it to 12, knocked two bucks off it, and called it a special. The supermarkets, like the rest of us, are coping with the cost of living crisis, their cost of transport, energy, wholesale, grocery prices, lots of things have gone up. The question is, by how much above the rate of inflation? Are they profiteering unnecessarily? Now, this question is coming into stark relief at the moment with the inquiry into supermarket prices in Canberra, and also as it's confession season, what they call confession season on the ASX, on the stock exchange. Now, that's the nickname for when the slather of half-year or interim company results come through at this time of year. They call it confession season because so often it's a chance for companies to say, well, we weren't going as well as we predicted in our forecasts, and ergo the confession. But this year, it's a different kind of of confession season. This time, there's some very timid confessions because some companies are making what appears to be too much money. They appear to be profiteering from their customers. They are making big, fat profit margins. As my peer Michael Pascoe the New Daily put it the other day. He said the likes of AGL, which quadrupled their net profit. They said it was improved performance at power stations, a more stable energy market, more stable, and higher prices for customers, should be from customers, all contributed. Mervac, the big property developer, the big trust doesn't pay any tax. Its residential gross margins were 26% last year and 16% this year. Transurban, the monopoly of monopolies, the toll road operator in Australia, had its profits quadruple and so it goes. Are they exploiting inflation? Are they jacking up their prices under the cover of inflation and pointing the bone at inflation saying it's not our fault, we have to lift prices? It's a difficult one to tell. It is the job of companies to deliver the best possible profit for shareholders within legal limits within the law. So they are supposed to profiteer. And it is the job of governments to regulate against profiteering. Now, even the AFR, which is just unapologetically pro-big business, unrelentingly pro-big business, it's been marvelling at the obesity of these profit margins, noting News Corp, or citing News Corp, citing Nick Scarly, citing AGL, and citing Transurban. Qantas, says the AFR, got the ball rolling when it handed down last year's profit. Qantas spectacularly unravelled weeks of reporting a record profit for shareholders at the same time. Profits had been fuelled, said the AFR, by higher prices, job cuts, a lack of competition. And this, unfortunately, is a quality which is endemic to the Australian business scene. Lack of competition. Big businesses consolidated close to government. Now, we gave Transurban the usual hiding a few days ago when they emerged with their glorious result. Great to be a shareholder of Transurban. Not so great to be a motorist or a taxpayer. This monopoly of toll road monopolies doesn't pay any tax either, although it did actually pay a bit this time. We think it must have been a mistake or something. They paid a smidgen. But the reason is that it looks like profiteering is that road traffic was up just 2.1% and total revenue was up 6.4% and profits were way up beyond that. In other words, they're making excess profits above inflation. And this is these are regulated monopolies. They've just got the better hand over governments when they've done their deals and locked in very good deals to jack up their toll prices over the years. Now, there have been efforts in the Liberal Party media to betray the big risk to inflation as rising pay for workers. I think the problem that we've had is that we've, you know, we, we have, people decided they didn't really want to work so much anymore through COVID and that has had a massive issue on productivity. You know, tradies have definitely pulled back on productivity. You know, they, they have been paid, paid a lot to do not too much in the last few years. 
and we need to see that change. We need to see unemployment rise. Unemployment has to jump 40, 50% in my view. We need to see pain in the economy. We need to remind people that they work for the employer, not the other way around. But we know the workers don't set prices. We know the companies set prices and rising prices is inflation. Therefore, companies are responsible for inflation, not workers. They don't set the prices. So this is the RBA's conundrum, the Reserve Bank. They won't say it because, you know, mates at the big end of town, but it is rising corporate profits, which account for the bulk of inflation. What the government does about it is entirely another thing. It is a very tricky issue. But the key point is that Australia is the land of duopolies and monopolies. We know that Australia is indeed the lucky country, but it is a lucky country even more than for its people. It is a lucky country for investors and corporations. Check out this chart. Look where Australia sits on profits compared to all other rival nations. And just spare a thought for the poor old ACCC. What does it do? For a start, it needs more money and more independence to cover other areas which it doesn't already cover, like gas. So we've covered the reasons that Australia has high prices. It's monopolistic behaviour. It's a large nation with relatively few large companies. Now, half of these companies, half of corporate Australia was bailed out during the COVID and the GFC. The banks during the GFC and the COVID JobKeeper bailed half of the big end of town. 40 billion splashed where it didn't need to be splashed. People that did not need it to survive at the expense of all of us beleaguered consumers. Governments, of course, which is the problem, are closer to corporations than they have ever been with their donations and their subsidies and their molly coddling by the financial media. So it's time to get serious about prices and deliver the ACCC more power. Perhaps even put all these regulators together and make a super regulator super independent of government like the Future Fund or the RBA. So they have that independence to be able to carry out investigations more robustly and with less timidity. Thank you for your support. Please like, share, comment in the space below. Throw us a few bucks if you can afford it. We've got to keep the production up. We've got to lift the production. In fact, getting good traction on YouTube, but we can do more. The mainstream media has totally failed, as you can see. And so it needs to be balanced in the interests of democracy so that all people know what's going on in this country.